During the uh, pre-Islamic era of ignorance, one of the Arab tribes attacked another. And it was a vicious battle during which the attacking tribe captured some of the females of the attacked tribe. And then finally, when the war stopped and the battle finished, they came to terms. So the attacked tribe requested the attacking tribe to bring back their females. And one of the captured females was the daughter of the head of the attacked tribe. And it is mentioned as in the Fath by Ibn Hajar that the head of that tribe, Banu Tamim, was a man by the name of Qais, Qais Tamim. His daughter was one amongst the captured females. So the attacking tribe accepted the term, but they said, we'll give the decision to the females. Whoever decides to stay with us will stay. Whoever decides to go back will return her back to you. So they did, and the females did, except that the daughter of Qais himself refrained. refrained and refused to go back to her father. So he made an oath. He made a pledge that if he is ever to be granted a child, a female child, he will immediately kill her. He will immediately bury her alive. And that's when this practice started and many of the Arab tribes followed suit and imitated his uh, obnoxious act and started burying their daughters alive. Now they had two styles of doing this or two ways of doing it. At the time of birth, the husband will command her, uh, his uh, wife to go and deliver next to a hole, a pitch in the ground. And would instruct her that if the newborn is a boy, she is to keep him and come back. And if it is a girl, to simply dump her and bury her alive. The second way is that they would keep the girl until she became six years of age. And then the father would instruct the mother to adorn her, dress her up, and he would take her with him. I just want you to visualize this. This is, this is so vulgar, so hard-hearted, it's impossible to believe. A six-year-old daughter of yours you request her mom to adorn her, dress her up, and you carry her, and then you take her to a, a, the desert, and you stand her in front of a hole, empty wells of water, and then would tell his daughter, look down, and whenever she looked down, he would just simply push her down, alive, and then... It's beyond perception. Anyone who has a daughter would understand what I'm saying. This is just too harsh, too harsh, too harsh to believe that humans would do that. This was the status of females prior to Islam, particularly I'm talking about daughters today. Whenever a man would receive the information or the news that his wife gave birth to a female, he would frown become frustrated and angry and feel dis disgraced and humiliated. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَإِذَا بُشِّرَ أَحَدُهُمْ بِالْأُنْثَى ظَلَّ وَجْهُهُ مُسْوَدًّا وَهُوَ كَظِيمٌ When one of them receives information about a birth of a female, 
His face would turn dark and he suppresses grief. Yatawara min al He hides from people, subhanallah, as if he's done a grave sin by receiving a daughter. Yatawara min al He hides from people. Min su ima From the evil. Su. They consider that evil news from the evil of which he was informed. Then the result, then the choices in front of him, as Allah follows to say, Should he keep her in humility, meaning feeling disgraced, or bury her under the ground. This was the status of daughters before Islam. This is the low level humanity reached and in other non-Muslim faiths during the same era, things were even worse than that. But when Islam came, when Islam came, he made this a prohibited act in the book of an Imam al-Bukhari and the book of an Imam Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, and this is narrated by al-Mughir ibn Shu'bah. He said, Inna Allah harrama alaykum wa'da al-banat. Allah made it prohibited upon you to bury your daughters alive. Not only that, Allah azza wa jal put an obstacle in front of anything that could lead to that. The feeling of hatred and grief was also forbidden. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is narrated by Uqba ibn Amr, reported by Imam Ahmad, classified as authentic by Al-Albani. He said, لا تكره البنات Don't hate your daughters. فإنهن مؤنسات غاليات For they are precious and bring joy to you. Look at the switch from hatred to the feeling of joy. The feeling of being blessed. You have a precious jewel. Allah granted you in the form of a daughter. Another thing that was given as an instruction is not to favor sons over daughters because that would eventually lead to feeling that there are, the daughter is a lower level. The Prophet وسلم, said, and this is narrated by Ibn Abbas, reported by Ahmad, classified as authentic by Ahmad Shakir. May Allah have mercy on them all. He said, whoever is given a daughter and he does not bury her alive, nor humiliate her, nor favor her son, his son's over her, Allah will admit him into Jannah by her virtue. Subhanallah. So all means that could lead to that obnoxious behavior and action were blocked. Not only that, Allah Azza wa attached a lot of virtue to having daughters and raising daughters. Number one, protection from the fire of hell. Aisha radiallahu anha, and this is in the books of Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim. She narrates that a woman came, a poor woman, came to her asking for help, asking for something to eat. And she had two daughters. So Aisha, and notice we're talking about the wife of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Aisha had only one single date in her house. Think of what you have in the refrigerator and the cupboards of the kitchen and the storage. And, and think of the messenger sallallahu house that has only one date to see how we deal with life and how they dealt with life. Anyway, so she said, that's the only thing I had, so I picked it up 
and gave it to her. She said that mother split that date into two and gave each of her daughters a half and she had nothing for herself to eat. So she preferred them over herself. She said, so I was amazed at that. So when, the when she left, the Messenger وسلم, came, I informed him about this situation. And his response to that was, whoever is tested by any daughter, and I'll explain this term, then Allah, then they will be a shield for him from the fire of hell on the day of judgment. And in another narration, also in Al-Bukhari and Muslim, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever takes the responsibility of raising any daughter, again, I'll explain this, then they or she will be a shield from, for him from the fire of hell on the day of judgment. Al-Imam Al-Qurtubi commented on any daughter because in Arabic it says بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْبَنَاتِ He said this means any number of daughters. Meaning that even having a single daughter is enough to be a protection from the fire. Of hell. Now, in the second narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever takes the responsibility of any daughter and is good to them or her, she or they will be a shield from the fire of hell. Now, what is being good? Now, this is a condition for this protection and shield. In the narration, in the Musnad, Musnad al-Imam Ahmad, classified as authentic by al-Albani and narrated by Uqba ibn Amr. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever has three daughters, now we said three is not a necessity because the other narration said any number. But in this narration, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned three. He said, and he perseveres in properly upbringing them, provides them with food and drink and clothes according to his ability, then Allah Azza wa Jal will make them a protection for him from the fire of hell. So this is the first benefit and virtue of having a daughter or daughters. Second one, being admitted into Jannah, which is something we all uh, strive for. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this is reported by Imam Ahmed, classified as authentic by Al-Albani. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever gets three daughters and properly disciplines them, is merciful to them and nurtures them, Allah Azza wa Jal made it an obligation upon Himself to certainly admit him into Jannah. To certainly it's an obligation he made upon himself to certainly admit him into Jannah. In the narration in the book of Abu Dawood, also classified as authentic by Al-Albani, reported by Ibn Abbas, the Prophet ﷺ added, and marries them off. Allah will admit him into Jannah. All Allah made an obligation upon him to certainly admit him into Jannah. So Allah Azza wa Jal paved the way for us 
to enter Jannah for sure by virtue of properly raising our daughters, properly caring for our daughters or daughter. And then when they reach the proper age, then marrying them off to the proper husband. Number three of the benefits of raising daughters or having daughters or a daughter is being in the company of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah. Look at this. Look at this great reward one can accumulate as a result of having a daughter or more and properly taking care of them and disciplining them. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever takes care of two daughters, now takes care here according to the description given in the prior narrations, in terms of worldly matters, giving them food, drink, shelter, clothes, so on, and with regards to the matters of the hereafter, discipline, cultivation, upbringing, so on and so forth. Whoever takes care of two daughters will come this close on the Jannah to me, uh, in the day of judgment to me. So he will be this close in the company of Muhammad Wasallam, and he coupled these two fingers, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't we all long to have this? Don't we all wish to be with Muhammad Sallallahu Don't we all wish to be protected from fire and be admitted into Jannah? Well, it's a very easy opportunity for those who have daughters because some might say, I only have boys. Well, yes, but this is for those who have and many do. But we have to keep in mind that the issue is not food and drink. The issue is not only financial. The main issue is, though this is part of it, but the main issue is to upbring them properly and raise them upon faith. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to help us properly raise and upbring our daughters and our sisters, because there are narrations speaking about sisters as well. And to make us all worthy of His mercy and admit us into Jannah. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah alayhi wa rahmah. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'ina thumma amma ba'd. Last two points I would like to address are the rights of daughters and mistakes of parents. One of the most important rights or of the rights of the daughter upon her parents and particularly the father is that they have to teach their daughter her religion. You can't just leave them playing all the time and grow up until a late age before you start teaching them their faith. You can't delay teaching them prayer, for example, they used to, the companions used to train their children to fast Ramadan from a very young age. An age that would stop crying when given something like a teddy bear. You can imagine how young that was. They would make them fast and whenever they would cry, they would just give them this cotton toy to keep them quiet. So you have to teach and train your daughter from a very young age. 
she has to know her faith. You have to instill the love of Allah and His Messenger وسلم, in her heart. Number two, you have to raise her upon piety. You have to make her live her life with being conscious of Allah Azza wa Jal, mindful of Him, fearful of His punishment and anger. All of these are things that have to start off very young. And by the way, upbringing, though the, the father is addressed in particular in some, some texts, but the responsibility of raising children is a responsibility of the couple, of the father and the mother. It's the parent's responsibility. It's not just the father, nor is it just the mother's. Number three, protecting her bashfulness. See, females by nature are created bashful and shy. And it's outside factors that attack her and destroy this. So we have to work hard on preserving and guarding that because bashfulness, as the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is in Bukhari and Muslim, he said, Al Haya'u la yati illa bi khair. Bashfulness results in nothing but goodness. So you want to protect this goodness. You want to protect the source of goodness in your daughter. Because maintaining that bashfulness is a guard against immorality and destructive mistakes. See, raising your daughter emanates from the sense and feeling of responsibility before Allah and that she will be questioned by Allah Azza wa Jal. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is in the books of Al-Bukhari and Muslim reported by Ibn Umar, he said, كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِهِ You're all guardians in charge and you will be held accountable to those under your guardianship. See, when one always reminds himself, has this feeling, is mindful of that day and that particular moment when he is going to stand before Allah Azza wa Jal and will be questioned about his deeds and his shortcomings will certainly strive very hard not to be negligent with regards to his daughters. One of the most important rights and a heavy responsibility upon our shoulders, fathers, is marrying off our daughters. In the book of Imam Tirmidhi, classify the sound by Al Albani, narrated by Abu Huraira. He وسلم, said, If a man whose religious commitment and manners you accept, meaning they are accepted religiously, then marry your daughter off to him. If he approaches you for marriage, then marry your daughters off to him or your daughter off to him. And if you do not, he وسلم, said, great corruption and trial will be spread upon the earth. Why is that? Because when you do not, when you delay or refrain from marrying your daughter off to the right candidate, she has a need and he has a need. That will eventually be 
fulfilled in a wrong way. It's a great treachery to the daughter and betrayal to the pledge between you and Allah to do as He commands. If you do not ascertain that that person who is proposing is proper with regards to his faith and manners. The Prophet ﷺ did not mention his job, his wealth, anything else. Not to undermine other matters, but this is what matters. This is the important criteria by which I judge whether or not I should give my daughter off in marriage to this man. This is the best kindness. This is the highest level of love and honesty and sincerity to your daughter is when you investigate the proposing gentleman before you decide yes or no. I will or I will not. Among the common mistakes by parents, particularly fathers, one is pertaining to marriage, exaggeration in the amounts requested as dowry. You get a person who is fresh, fresh out of college, for example, or his, whose salary is X, and you ask him multiples of his salary to be submitted as dowry for my daughter. You know that the man doesn't have that and will not be able to afford it. So it's a nice way of saying, sorry, but we won't. Why? Why miss out on someone whose faith is sound and manners are good for money? Our daughters are not a commodity. We're not, we're not in business here. She's a trust. And this money is going to her anyways. Why should you put that man through a debt which she, as your daughter, will suffer from after marriage? Because if he has to borrow that, he has to live tight until he pays it off. But she has to live with him, this tightness. Why? Why make her go through this? Another mistake is Allowing the girl to go in and go out, leave, come back anytime, anywhere, without asking, without even knowing, without bothering to find out what, she, what and what, where she's going. That's being dishonest. That's betraying the girl. That's breaking the covenant between you and Allah with regards to your daughter. Another mistake is what I called false love. False emotions towards my daughter. I don't want to pressure her. So I see her going out without hijab. Oh, sweetheart, don't do this. No, dad, I'm too young. Okay, honey, I don't want to pressure you. Oh, wonderful. And then you make her go to hell and you go to hell with her. This is not love. This is pure hatred to your daughter. Because what you're doing is simply allowing shaitan to manipulate her thinking and take her by hand to the fire of hell. Another mistake is not knowing or checking whom she is befriending from girls, of course. If it's boys, then your problem is serious. We're talking about female companions, female friends. Not knowing the type of girls she's around, she's hanging around with, or she visits, she goes to the houses of. This is wrong, this is serious. Because 
she will be influenced by her company. And if you don't make sure that she is with the right company, then that's very risky on your daughter. Very risky on your daughter. Finally, one thing that kills youth, drives them mad, is free time. And if that's not directed to the right direction, if that is not controlled by parents, then it will be misused. If you don't make sure you get her busy doing something beneficial or at least permissible, beneficial as in reciting Quran, attending study circles, reading beneficial Islamic beneficial books, at least make sure that she is spending her time in something permissible. Even if it wasn't religious. But don't betray your daughter and see that she's spending the day and the night, particularly the night, on her laptop or her, her smartphone and just overlook that. Oh, let her be busy. Yes, but that type of be busy or being busy is a way to hell. So be careful, be mindful that you will be responsible. You will be held accountable. You will be questioned by Allah about how and why she deviated from the right path. We need to be careful, brothers and sisters. We need to be mindful of Allah and the day we meet Allah Azza wa Jal. Take care of our daughters. Our daughters is our precious jewels. They are a gift. They are a bounty from Allah Azza wa Jal. So let's not turn this into a means of destruction to us in this life and the hereafter. We ask Allah's forgiveness. Allahumma afir lana dunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin.